This is Kelly Johnson in the foreground and Larry Bohannon behind him, chief t flight test engineer, on April 26, 1962. The number one A-12 is in the background, and that's Norm Nelson and Doug Nelson of the CIA and the Air Force, Doug Nelson being in uniform. This is going down the taxiway, and on our first test, we're going to roll down the runway, coming up on takeoff speed, lifting the airplane off, and sending it quickly back down again. The 35 millimeter movie cameras are stationed down at the takeoff end of the runway. Here comes a 12, two engines and a fuselage. Obviously, there's a little instability both longitudinally and laterally. Two days later, it was decided that we would take off with the pitch damper, yaw damper, and roll damper all turned on. They had been... Uh, fine-tuned in the simulator based on the predicted airplane flight characteristics. This is a constellation that flew up to the ranch, which was the Groom Lake area north of Las Vegas, in the atomic testing area, and it brought the dignitaries from the CIA and Associated Air Force people up from Burbank. When you see Air Force people and I'm talking about the CIA, I have to realize that 40% of the personnel in the CIA are service personnel, Air Force, Army, and Navy. This is the one-car garage that holds the A-12. The A-12 also was turned into the YF-12, which had a round nose to accommodate a 40-inch radar dish and carried three Gar-9 missiles in the Shine area with the ASG-18 fire control system built by Hughes Aircraft. The A-12 primarily carried automated camera equipment, and it was programmed through a pre-planned mission that was introduced into computer and controlled by an inertial navigation system. And the inertial navigation system could update itself by a star tracker that was built by Northrop also. Although Lytton is more famous for inertial navigators, uh, Northrop did the inertial navigation for the A-12. The F-104 off to the right gives you an idea of the size of the A-12. The F-104 in its clean configuration without tips, weighs about 17,000 pounds, and the A-12 weighs 119,000 pounds. On the other side of the cockpit, with his finger pointing right now, is Najib Halabi, who at that time was head of the FAA. Kelly's on the near side as they're looking over the cockpit and talking about it. The Air Force troop with uh, Cast on his left arm is Colonel Leo Gary, who is now a retired Brigadier General. He was in the CIA and monitored both uh, U-2 and A-12 program for the CIA. I'm trying to figure out who these guys are. The guy with the hat is Dick Bissell. Anyway, here come the stars. Uh, Lou Shock, myself, has the green jacket on. And Bill Park is without a jacket, and he's going to chase me in the F-104. As you see, we're very brave. We fly without a parachute. don't even need a helmet. Actually, the parachute is attached to the seat, as always, and the helmet depends on whether we're wearing a spacesuit or just use a normal uh, hard hat, which was also set up in the airplane. It's a missile on the Halibi. Uh, Leo Gary again. Looks like he's lieutenant colonel right now. K-2 
Kelly with his back to us. Now he's turning around, nervous a cat, but looking away from the airplane as if he hadn't had a care in the world. There goes the 104 out. He will take off ahead of me, and when I roll, he'll pick me up, chase plane. And also 101 is taxiing out, which will also be a chase plane and carry cameras in the second seat with a photographer who is going to uh, shoot pictures of the flight. Actually, uh, I'm feeling better about having a good takeoff with the dampers on. Could be much worse. The idea is to hold the aircraft at the head of the runway with brakes. You run up to full military power, release the brakes, and hit the afterburners. For about the initial uh, four or five months, we flew the airplane with the J-75 engine. As you see, the dampers make all the difference in the world, and the airplane flies very smoothly. There it is in flight. 101 is on one side shooting pictures, and the 104 is on the other. As this sequence takes a while, it may be interesting to comment on what caused all the oscillations of the airplane on its initial liftoff. Seven fuel cells, the length of the fuselage. Most of the fuel was in the back end of the airplane, as uh, many of the people who were crewing the airplane were not aware that the airplane was going to lift off. Only a few of us had talked about that the night before. I'm turning the dampers off one at a time till I get the yaw pitch and roll damper turned off and I'm finding the airplanes flying very smoothly. I just introduced it. Makes a big difference in the way the airplane flies. Um, as a pilot, I should have caught that before I taxied the airplane. Uh, and going back, I was so excited about the thing, thought of lifting off, I never even thought about checking it. Actually, uh, 34 years later, I'm not sure I remember what we were doing in sequence on that flight. Well, it lasted 55 minutes. And everything we tried worked okay. We went up to about 1.2 Mach number. The airplane had difficulty in reaching Mach 2 with the J-75 engines, which were interim engines used because the J-58 engines, which were designed for the airplane, were not ready for flight yet. See how the wraparound effect of the chine makes the airplane look very sleek. Of the landing gear. We had three main wheels on each landing gear rather than four wheels, two in tandem. That was done to save weight and the brakes were very minimal also to save weight. But we had a 40 foot drag chute, the same drag chute that was designed for the B 58.